Welcome back to School Cast Alex. Ross Edgley is here, come to visit the school. He's even got his school uniform on, which is exciting. And we're going to teach Ross how to flag. He, he doesn't think we're going, to, we're going to give him a maximum of an you hour. I think it's going to take 10 minutes. <laughs> There's some nervousness here, but we reckon I we can actually get this guy a human flag a lot quicker than he is backing himself. Uh, I don't know, you've not, my mobility is awful. Yeah. Let's awful. start with that. That's we'll a good place to start. Okay. okay. He's a little bit worried. We said a guy on oh, the shoulders <laughs> as big as it sounds like. You don't know how <laughs> self conscious I feel right now. <laughs> Jack goes, Ross, go in the middle. I'm like, no, no, no. Send your hair somewhere. I want you in the middle. I Okay guys, so let's have a look at the end point of what we're trying to achieve with the human flag and there's a couple of, of key pillars that we need to be aware of. So the first one is we need to get range of movement. So we need Jacko to jump up on the our, uh, man-made flag rack here. So the first thing is if we can't get shoulders overhead or range of movement overhead, then we're going to struggle to get this position. The big thing here is this bottom shoulder's got to come through. So to create a stable base, think about this bone in the shoulder or the arm here driving straight into the body of the chest. That's going to give us our stable point. So we have to be able to open that chest up first. That's our pushing arm. This is our pulling arm. And they're going to be creating a torque, which means that we can then start to connect the hips and lift the feet. <laughs> Just like that. So pushing hard, pulling hard with the top, and we're going to break this down into the different components and then build it back up and get Ross just like that hanging out. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is our movement. The first part of our framework is movement preparation, and we're just going to get Ross to kind of see what his mobility is like overhead before we try and get him up on the box. So the one thing here that we're going to try and um, to look at is can we create the range of movement, and then we're going to loosen it out and see if we can make an improvement. So. Ross, get your feet in next to your backside. I feel I should warn you, I am the world's most immobile man. Just tell the people how far you're swimming a week at the moment. <laughs> I'm, yeah, so we're, do, we're doing about 100 kilometers in, in a good week. That's not good for lap length. <laughs> 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 so don't judge it. Don't judge it. <laughs> yeah. All right, little fingers together, and then try and get into the wall and see how it feels, and then try to arch oh, the back. Honestly, this is all I'm working okay. So then we're gonna, so we've got a little bit of range we can improve there, but our job here, first thing to do is to loosen that out a little bit. Otherwise, we start to get into overhead position. If we're not prepared the system, then we're in danger of, of not giving ourselves. Uh, I think we've got no, I've got no doubt that he's strong enough, but if we're not able to create that good position overhead, you find a bit of a losing battle to start with. Okay. Yeah. So our lats are going to be a limiting factor and be able to get that hand into the position that we need. So we're just going to do a little bit of self-myofascial release with a hockey ball or a cross ball as we've got here. So it's real simple, just like if you're going to go to the physio or soft tissue therapist, we're looking to find the sore points in the muscle and Dave's just putting that onto the lat and it can work around the back of his shoulder there as well. Starting to find those trigger points is where the adhesions are all stuck down, we've got muscle glued together, a little bit too much neural activity going on. So putting the ball on those bits where it's sore, anything on a pain scale of one to ten, six and above is where you want to spend a bit of time. Hang out there for a minute or two, you'll feel that pain drop off and then we should get a pretty instant kickback on an improvement in range of movement if we can decrease some of that overactivity in the muscle. Right, Jack, I can spend there all day. It's nice. Let me see that. Let me in. So, just on the back, so anything on that bottom side, Ross, anything in here, and you can get right into the back of that rotator cuff as well. So, there's not, with this, there's not really a right or wrong way, it's just chase the pain. Yeah, basically. yeah. Only if you get to a point where you are getting numbness or tingling in your fingers, that's a nerve. So, right. you just don't roll the nerve and just stick on the muscle. But you're looking for those bits that are pretty grotty. Anything that feels kind of gristly, jumps out of the way, you're just trying to pin it down and. You look like you're over in level two, so like bend that elbow and then give me some internal external rotation in that as well. So find the find the trigger point and then start to mobilise through that. Let's see, man of steel, not even grimacing. <laughs> it all hurts, I'm trying to figure it out. But that that is again what what I find uh, amazing that like too few people understand that you know muscles aren't just there to generate force you know they be can become these i call them almost like, like stagnant pools yeah. you know that become contorted the fibers are stuck together so yeah, yeah. it's not and, and i hold my hands up I, you know i know all the theory i just need to do it <laughs> 
Okay, so once we've got in and loosened off some of that muscle and got rid of some of that neural tension, it's now about, let's not necessarily make a lot and added any length to the muscle, we want to now actually try and elongate it, so a little bit of a, a stretch or mobilisation. We're going to, we're not going to do static because we're going to want to put down an awful lot of power in, when we go into this flag, so we don't want to decrease any of that power out, but so we're going to look to mobilise what's in there. So you're going to use your ring or you can have a band or you can grab the, um, on the cage. Thumb pointing up, so just trying to maintain some external rotation and then Big round in the back, trying to keep that like, a lat on as much length as possible, and then just trying to work it into some, explore some areas for you where it's tight around here. Mm. And start to manipulate like your hip as well, because lat attaches down the bottom of the hip, so depending on what's happening at these two points here, mm. is going to affect the stretch on that. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, and almost like. But I think there's so much around calisthenics, is like that but kinesthetic awareness, you've got to start to understand like what it feels like where you are in space is not just a matter of moving weight from A to B, it's actually gonna go, how am I gonna to start to leverage my own body weight? So therefore you've gotta have awareness of where you are in space to be able to do that. Yeah. So we've done a bit of mobility where we've taken some tension out of the muscle, we've put a little bit of mobility in that joint, we've greased it up a little bit. So we're just gonna now go back into our test and see if we've made a change. So it should feel, we've actually we've got fingers to the walls, we need to make sure that we're kind of maintaining some midsection alignment, but that this feels feel. so much better. On it. That's that's incredible. But I mean, you you are working with, like I said, the world's most mobile man. <laughs> but that, that already is better. But it's five minutes of work, and we, what you've done is you've optimised the opportunity for success in the in the session. So if we spend five minutes at the beginning prepping the prepping the body for what we're going to do. It means when we actually get into it, we can then just get a little bit more out of that training session, and it's a five minute investment in moving better before we get into the strength side. So the next phase of starting to get our human flag um, nailed down is a movement pattern. We need to teach the brain what the shape is we need to get into and how to, to nail down the connection that we're trying to look at. So there's a real kind of neural learning skill acquisition component to that, and that's our movement pattern. So we're going to focus on the bottom arm. The bottom arm is our pushing arm. It's going to create that stable base that we're going to then allow to, everything else to move around. So Jack is going to plant his hand out, turned out, out slightly, just because again we're going to open that palm up onto the bar. And this is going to come into what we might look as a standard sort of T push up or an ab um, lateral hold position. The job here though, what we're going to do differently is I'm going to get Jacko to drive that hand hard into the floor. So we're doing this because we really need to create that downward force for the flag. We're seeing that hip raise up a little bit and it can drop in either hold tight, but actively maintain that tension, not just sitting and resting in that socket. Jacko is pretty good here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a kettlebell. Beautiful thing about this is we start to get some really nice proprioception in that top shoulder as well. More shoulder stability, more connection, and pushing her away from the floor, and that's the basis of what we're trying to move towards. Yep. The big thing for me is just that that arm, it's not a side plank vertical. We want it at that angle. You want you getting used to pushing yourself down by your way. Yeah. Just feel that connection also like allow the slap joint to go so just take all the tension that you yeah, just sit that shoulder <laughs> the ground. And then I try and drive that shoulder away. So you try and make that lock the arm as elastic. So you oh, feel like you're actually driving the, the arm to be as long as it can. Try to move these points as far away from each other as you can. Yeah. Almost like perfect. That. That's, and just, that, that's that mobility. And keep pushing hard with that bottom hand. You really, so you can feel that actually the tension going through that. It's, it's keeping that shoulder. Almost feels like it's separated. It's like the end range. Got it. Then walk your feet a little bit further away. So this goes on more of an angle. So less vertical. Nice. Good. Stack your foot on top of the other. Do you want to try and look at that? Level three. Woo! The shake. Good. You got it? I think so. Yes. yes. <laughs> so keep driving that away. It's a real nice progression. That's, that's an eight kilo kettlebell, so you don't need a lot of weight for this. We've got a bit of shake and bake. All right, so next up we go for a uh, look at the top arm on its own. And this is, it, well, we, we'll start with a, an active hang and then we'll just take it into a single one. So the key for this is that we're creating some tension through the joint. As on that push away, you're creating tension through your joint. We're doing the same thing, but this time it's the opposite, yeah? So we're pulling down, this, this top arm is a pulling arm, mm -hmm. so he's driving his shoulder down away from his ear, and you see that like, nice bit of separation. The strength then comes, can we transfer onto one side and hold that position and not drop out and lose tension? So if it drops down and goes slack, you see all that movement. Okay, but it's yeah. all, none of it's going from bicep, yeah? The arms, the arms locked down, all the tension's going from the back here. Yeah, right, yeah, there we go. Like the baby steps for me, so it's like so just relax real loose here, and then first just both arms drive your shoulder blades down. Good, Perfect. So you feel like all that tension through there, and then hold it. So go there and hold it. Good, and then try and transfer onto one side without <laughs> yeah, with the get, get, your go, get your thumb around it. Right, there you go. Awesome. So create tension first. Yep, so drive yourself up. Yeah, good. 
Good, and then to keep that. So don't drop that, then don't drop down. So keep that, and then try and go to one side. That's drop it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, try the other side. I'll stop you from moving. Can you pull into that now? Pull it. Ah, yeah, 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 that's what we need. So you're going to go up on that one side, so not there. Up, and then I want you to try and pull that hip up towards your hip. What? Towards your hip. Sorry. Why was I just smacking the side? Because you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're going to do that. 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 Because you and then we can bring in the oblique. Then we've got enough tension here to then keep those feet off the ground. So it's like the, the hang is one thing, but yeah. we'll be able to actually then pull the oblique in. Like you have your the last so locations. There we go. Hip up towards your shoulder. So you're then getting that makes sense and a bit of that. Right. Okay. But you need to do those two things. So you need to get that happening. <laughs> right. so that, that and then the hip up. Right. Yeah. Cool. So hold, bang, and then so that and try, try down. Cool. Yeah, Same side of me. Try and squeeze your hip towards that shoulder. Cool. Yeah. So you should. Thank you. Which way are you going to get first? So I'll go right. This way? Yeah. yeah. So it's there. Keep yeah, that tight. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Other side. Other side. <laughs> yeah, just, that, 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 so when you want, when, sorry, so this time go to the side. Go to, go to the side. Yeah. So that. And, okay, and then pull then. that shoulder down and then that hip towards that shoulder. So oh, this is there. there. Yeah. <laughs> the dance going to be <laughs> <laughs> oh <Stop>. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Try right. start on that side of the bar. If you're gonna go, if you're gonna leave left arm on the bar, so I'll go left. Yeah, start over here. Yeah, so that, there up, yeah. as a swing. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna, you're not gonna swing. So and then crank. Yeah. And then it's that. Sorry, that one. That yeah. Those two things together. Bang. Yes. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> then starting hands close together. You will swing less as well. Rather than going like a wide grip, because <laughs> then you're gonna start <laughs> swinging across. Amazing! <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to graduate from flag school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. There. Go for it, yeah. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. 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 Y
Right, so never we talked about the active hang, you've got to really crank that shoulder in. You've got to, you've got to be going active hang hard. Right. If you don't, the body's just going to go and do your bicep instead, which can get a flag, but it's not going to look beautiful. I so. think that's what I'm doing, I'm still bicep heavy, yeah. So really, like, if I had these, I'd be bicep heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, just use these. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to go into the shoe and give you the chance to feel what the whole position is like. I'm okay. going to hold your legs. Okay. And I can hold. I can hold you quite hard, or I can hold you easier. And I, I can work less hard. And you're going to work, start working harder. Work down your body towards your hip. Right. As I get closer to the to the fulcrum where you where you're holding on. Yeah. It's going to start to feel a little bit harder for you. I might even let you go, and you might hold it or. <laughs> 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 okay. Big thing here, Ross, don't let go of the bar. She was she went she goes out right and I didn't think that, that was necessarily needed to be said. So, we, <laughs> so I just picked this lady's legs up to here and she just let go. Bang! She's on the floor now on her legs over there. So it's a good tip. Good instruction. Very good tip. Hold on to the bar. Head of health and safety. <laughs> Push and pull, super hard. Good, that's it. Yeah. Long, sweet, sweet, that's it. There, there, better, better. Top arm, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Good, good, good nice. Good. Yeah, I, still, yeah. I'm still, I think I'm still pulling there yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So it's like, really, 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 you've said a number of times, the body will find a pass of least, least resistance. Mm. Like, if you're real strong mm. here, clearly you are, like, <laughs> and, and that's, that's stronger, and it, then why would the brain want to use a different muscle? Right, okay. especially when like, you go back to go, actually, Part of this is, is understanding where the weak link is in the chain. Mm -hmm. And for you, if you used to train more single arm active hand, like that's, you, you that's, the, that's the one. It's not your right. bottom arm, it's that ability to actually just hold that position. Yeah, that's better. See? Clearly. Oh, yeah. That yeah. feels stronger yeah. that side, yeah. 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 Remember, the top arm pulling, bottom arm pushing, and then when you're first going, it's going to be easier for you to just to kick out there rather than try and push into it. So just from here, a little kick with the feet. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> right. you, did, did you get psyched up for the flag? Did you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get it? Oh, I thought you were going to hit me. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, little spike of adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spine. Okay. The nervous system. I'm gonna do one more. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just Just one. 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 Just 45 minutes ago, something like that, and he has graduated <laughs> in his human flag, which we're all very happy with. Smiling, three smiles. It, it, it is, we were just talking about how um, the framework, when you follow it, you know, we deconstructed the human flag ourselves to learn it and built it back up, and then when we're applying it to people, yes, Ross can do it in such a short space of time because he's so strong, but for other people can build up that strength gradually, and it might take a bit longer, but for us, it's about the fact that the results show that it works, like, you, it looks impossible, but that's why we say you can redefine impossible. You follow those steps within our, uh, within our guides, within our framework, mm. and actually, you get that glimmer of, oh, it might not feel impossible anymore, and, and the, the proofs and the results, like, yeah. not blowing our trumpet, but we get people to do flags, and sometimes, I'm like, 
How do you even? I look at someone like I've been working a workshop and I'm like that guy's doing the flow. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. I think to get from A to B, you know, working in strength and conditioning, you see so many guys and they train harder, not smarter. And me having come in here and never tried the flag before, I wouldn't have a clue where to go. So I would just fatigue session after session, yeah. not knowing what to do. Whereas when you guys systematically break it down and, and, and genuinely like use it on the video, you see light bulb moments yeah. and I go, oh, 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 okay. And then, you know, it was far from pretty, you know, it was an ugly blood, but then you go, oh, you know, and taking that now, you can start pointing the toes, you can start make it look pretty and you can start to have fun. But, but that's what's been amazing for me actually seeing this sounds so weird, but you've been, I've been on a journey. Yeah. Like, it's, it's been weird, but no, it's, uh, it's been good. I feel kind of a sort of semi, semi-graduate, a semi now. Totally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But that's quite cool. That's two things for me on that. Like, one, you just learn to move in a new way. You taught yourself something new, which is pretty cool. Mm. We don't get to do that very often as adults. And the second thing is now you've got that, that understanding of how you're trying to move. It's just a matter of them applying strength training principles. Mm. So it's an isometric movement. So you go back to what you know about isometrics to get better at the flag just create more time and attention. And that's the beauty of the, the progressive framework in that you can actually build up and find a point which is right for you. Because mm -hmm. if you just come in and you didn't know what you're doing, you might be getting half a second time and attention just kicking up failing, kicking up failing. Whereas actually now, you can go and hold three, four, five seconds, start yeah. to put that together. That's a meaningful workout. Absolutely. Rather than spending three months like we did when we first learned of failing yeah. Yeah. until we eventually got it right and then we broke it down and yeah. said, actually, this is a much more effective way to learn it. Yeah. I think a lot of people, like some people will watch and go, well, look at the flipping out big Ross is super strong, like, like, I, like it still looks yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> They will say that. But they're going to go, he's strong, like, I can't do it. And like, what we're trying to show you is that everybody's got different strengths and weaknesses. And actually, at the beginning, yeah, your mobility, yeah. if, if you increased your overhead shoulder range, mm. that would feel immediately mm. even better. Mm. Yeah? That's and then someone else, it might be that they've really they've got loads of range, loads of mobility. They're quite, they've got the mm. skill acquisition, but they're just not strong enough. Well, mm, yeah. rather than doing a flag in 45 minutes, like Ross, you might have to go away and you might work for three, four, five, six, however many weeks it takes. It doesn't matter. You're on your own journey and you're doing your thing and working on what you're at. But just take something like this. It's just inspiration to actually try and have a go at, at, at doing something that right now for you feels impossible. It might not be a flag, it might be something even way simpler, but just take it as going, actually you can learn something new if you just follow a nice progressive systematic approach, like you said. That's a good point. And on that note, it, it, what I love about the complex compound nature of this, it will highlight weaknesses. And mine is like, you can't oh, hide. no, there's nowhere to hide on that. And mine's mobility, it's awful. And, and what's great on that is it's like, yeah, that is really bad and you work on it. And if that's the weakest part of your kinetic chain, it will identify. Well, I think you're like, like so I, I finished playing rugby four years ago and my shoulder range went there, horrific. It's still not great. And for me to go and go, oh, you need to, I need to work on a building. Like, yeah, I knew that already. Like, physio, go, I'll do these exercises, whatever. Like, I'm just, it's boring, like, working on it. Whereas when it went, oh, if you were able to work on your mobility, you're going to do a human flag. I'm like, well, mobility's boring, but I really want to do a flag. So I'm going to do it because I know it's going to give me an end result rather than just going, do mobility because you should do mobility. Yeah. Do mobility because there's your end point that's going to give you something that you really want. That's then you've got the motivation to do it. Yeah. I think that's what, that's for me definitely helps. That's me as well. When people say to me, do mobility, I'm yeah, like, ah, uh, uh, no. It's boring. But get, <laughs> do the flag? Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. 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 So if you haven't checked out this legend and some of the crazy things he's up to, sort of challenges he does, uh, link to his channel which is there up by Tim's head. If you want to learn the flag like um, like uh, Ross did, it might take you more than 45 minutes but we've got a, ha a human flag guide which is down there. And if you want one of our other tutorials to give you some free tips and help on how to do that human flag, that's up there. Say class dismissed. Class dismissed. <laughs>